Hey guys, RC here. Back with a new series. This will be a short-term series. This is going to be a tutorial style series for Starters Orders 7. This is a horse racing game and there's a little to it and it's, you know, I'll be honest with you. I bought Starters Order 6 about a year or so ago. Couldn't figure it out. Probably played less than an hour. Got, got fed up with it and trashed it. But I love horse racing and I've always wanted to have a good or at least a decent horse racing sim that was relatively easy to play haven't found one still haven't found one but the other day i saw it was uh i'm recording this on wednesday may what's the date today may 6th um and uh so may 2nd was the kentucky derby or the scheduled date for the derby I have not missed a Kentucky Derby in my lifetime. Uh, now, I'm not a huge horse racing fan. In fact, I, I watch three races a year, the Triple Crown races. But I enjoy the sport. I think horses are majestic. Uh, and I do love to watch those three races. Now, I haven't gotten into any other races, the Hamiltonian and the Breeders' Cup. And, yeah, you know, I, you know, but anyway, so... I saw a video the other day uh, that a guy put out, and it was kind of some basics, real basics. And it helped me immensely because that's how little I could figure out. So it helped me immensely, got me started in the game. And I still don't know much about it, but I've played through. Uh, I did a solo playthrough for about four years uh, in one day, just to try to figure out some of the nuances of the game, how to maneuver around, how to do different things. And then I've already recorded this series once, the series that you're about, you're, that this is starting. And the even though I have it full screen on my monitor, it only showed up on a third of the screen on my recording, which I didn't catch till I started rendering them to put them up for you guys. So I trashed all those. I've played around with the with the stuff. So just a few things. Uh, and, and I will tell you these ahead of time. I'm not sponsored by the game. I don't owe them anything. Um, I really feel the developer of the game has developed the game for people that know a lot about horse racing. And it's not really geared towards uh, novices uh, that just want to try to enjoy the game. Uh, so that's where I hope this series helps out some of you newer people that don't know a lot about horse racing. Uh, secondly, if you do go to their website, which is where the mods are, they're not on Steam Workshop, they're on the developers forum, uh, you have to register and there's a question you have to answer. If you don't know anything about horse racing, or you're not a, a, a aficionado, a, a hoodie snooty, or a hoity-toity, or whatever we call them, uh, hoity-toity is the word I use. Um, but if you're not a snob, you aren't going to know the answer, right? So it took me an hour to find the answer. And I said, damn it, I'm committed to finding the answer here. In the question, there is a name of a, and, and that name is, it says, name, uh, and it's like team speak or something like that. But I, that may not be right. But basically it says, uh, and it's to avoid bots, but in team speak, who is the greatest flat horse racing horse trained by Henry C? So I actually typed that question into Google. And you know what? Didn't give me anything. So started searching, started searching horses. And the trigger word was that word. It's the name of a paper or an online site. And that brought me to a Wikipedia page for that site. And in there, there was a list of the top horses in different fields. The very first horse in the flat track racing, if you click on his name, check the trainer, his name was like Henry Cooper. I couldn't even tell you, but it was Henry C. And um, so, yeah, Henry C doesn't even come up as a horse trainer. So anyway... That's where you find it if it helps you out. I'm not going to give you the name of the horse because they may change the question, but that's where I got the answer, and I don't want you spending an hour looking for it. All right, so here we are at the game. 
Now, this is going to be a five-part series. This episode is going to be just the introduction and setup of the game. Uh, episode two will deal with breeding. Episode three will deal with auctions, the various auctions, and how to buy a horse or sell a horse at auction. Episode four is going to be bidding on ho uh, betting on horses for racing, and five will be the actual racing itself. Now, depending on the length, I may condense some of those into into two parters, you know, where they're, you know, combined, but we'll see. So it's going to cover those five basic topics that will get you playing the game. And uh, so let's get started. So here's our main screen. This is a screen you'll come to. If you click on this, this will open up a Word doc or a PDF. There you go. And it's a quick start tutorial. There is some information in here, you know, that will help. So check that out at your leisure. And this is your quit button and your start or load button. It doesn't say load, but it says continue. This is your graphics qualities here. Uh, we're on the high and this is your commentary uh, or 3D racing. So if you don't want the 3D racing or your computer can't handle it, turn it off right there where my mouse is pointing. Also down here, you have the ability to create your own races. Uh, edit uh, game schedule, your racing schedule, uh, edit some of the legends or add in legends that you want and click to visit the game's website or Facebook page. I'll leave all that to you guys. We're going to get into the game. So we're going to start here. Now this is your save load screen. So you'll have, you have the ability to save multiple games. You can see if you don't have a save, there's no logo on the left. These are your load icons. Over on the right is where you would click to store a new game in that slot. So you can see I did play uh, yesterday for a while. I don't know what that is. Sand 6? have no idea. I think that's the sixth year. But uh, So we're doing flat, easier difficulty. And then uh, save 2 was on normal difficulty on a flat track. And that was, um, but so we're going to go there. We're going to overwrite that. And we're going to go here. So this is the first screen you'll go to in setting up. Now, evidently there are custom schedules, and we saw the little tab that you can edit a schedule. So if you have a other, if you have some other schedule, you can select it here. Otherwise, the little green checkbox is telling us we're going to use the default schedule. The the boxes are not the easiest to see. They're light green and dark green. Dark green means that you've ticked it off. So we're going with one player my name or what i'm calling myself here this is where you choose your silk colors your cap colors and your cap uh, trim i guess and this is the actual game mode so there are three modes plus there's an online league and then there are other settings so the first one is training owner game basically this is your vanilla game so basically in this trainer owner, it's the vanilla game. You, you do everything. You're the owner of the stable. You do the training. You own the horses. You, you put them into races. You make all the decisions. So that's the one we're going to go with. But you have the training only. This is if you want to get the training can be pretty in depth. Now we're going to use this simple training mode. If you turn that off, you would turn that off to do the training game for sure. So, you know, this gets into the nuances of you doing the minutia training on each and every individual horse. Uh, Going to be very a lot more time consuming, uh, a lot more due diligence, and really getting into the weeds of training the horse. Uh, and then they have a betting game where you're just basically going to the tracks and you're, you know, you're living the high life as a better. They do have single and multiplayer games. And basically, the goal is to win a million dollars by betting on races. Then they have online leagues. Now, I don't know anything about these, but I do know that yesterday I actually played out like five years. And then I started a new save, played out a, a two-year, recorded three episodes, and you know, uh, four episodes. And, you know, I'm scrapping those and re-recording them now. But I was able to do that in half a day. So these league modes, from what I've heard, these guys have simmed out centuries, centuries, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And they've gotten so much money and they're getting the best horses. So they're breeding the best horses. 
And so the horses they have to race are light years ahead of anything you'll have. So be aware of that. If you get into an online league, you're going to get toasted and it will be tough, but it may be what you're looking for. All right, so that's the th three main game modes plus the online modes. The game settings, the training, you can turn simple training on or off. If it's on with the dark box, basically the game does all the training for you uh, and uh, the horse is always ready to race. If you turn it off, you do the training. Uh, the uh, horses get tired after a race, after training. You have to manage the time. They can only race at certain points with rest. And, you know, a lot more minutia. Again, that may be what you're looking for. We're going to leave it on for the purposes of this playthrough. Because, again, I'm still learning the game. Uh, and small fields. Uh, this uh, makes the, you know, so like I was noticing a lot of the fields are 10 to 12 horses. A small field would be three to four, five, maybe six horses. Easier to win, easier to finish in the money. Uh, but this does not apply to feature races. That would be your Kentucky Derby, your Preakness, your Belmont. I don't know all the feature races, and they don't use the real names. So here's where we're going. Training, simple, blue and yellow, default game schedule. We're going to start a new game here. All right. This is the Legends mode. Legends are the great horses of history. So they don't have the rights to use the real names. But you can see here we have an American horse named Secretary. Two guesses if you know anything about horses, who that is, and the first one doesn't count. Of course, it's Secretariat. So what you can do here is you can turn Legend Repeats on. The Legends will come into the game almost immediately, like the second day of the uh, that you start. They're going to race their career, and they will retire. Now, there's a Steam Achievement for beating a legend. So that's really the only reason you might want to do this. But we're going to put on legend repeats. We're going to turn that on. So what that means is when secretary retires, it will immediately come back into the next batch of foals, which are a new horse. Uh, and it'll be a regen, basically. And it will be a legend again and it will have another legendary career. So that way you have multiple chances over you know, a 50 or a 100 year sim to face your legend horse and try to beat it. All right, so we're gonna start a new game from that. It will take a minute and you'll see on the next screen as it's developing the database right there, that it will take a while, but this only has to be done once when starting a new game. It does not redo this when you load an existing game. So we'll be right back when this is done. And it should be just about done, and there it goes. All right, so this is your main screen. You're gonna spend 90% of your game or more on this screen or one of the secondary screens from here. So what I'm going to do is kind of go through this top left corner is your information, uh, your silk colors, your, your picture. You can, tr you can change that if you want. Your ranking, your records, your horses in training, out to grass, breeding. Uh, this is our horse's owned summary. Uh, you can, of course, the blue uh, male logo. Uh, and then they have a pink, which is the female logo. Uh, so that is what's going on there. And uh, their age, uh, their career records, their career winnings, uh, their last winning rating. So when you rate, make it, when you have a race, you get a rating, and it's typically zero to a hundred, but it can go over a hundred if you're good enough. Right now, we're not going to have any, so none of our horses have ratings, and they finished uh, 49th and 70th. Uh, is their 49 and 70 is their current rating. Uh, this is their status. So we have two horses that are ready to race and one, the brown, is tired. He must have just run, but he'll be back to race shape in a couple of days. And then this is where you can look, uh, enter the horse in a future race. This is your farm. This is your, your where you go. And if you're getting audio and you don't want it, Speech alerts are on. You can turn it Speech on. Speech alerts right turned off. There. 
So uh, even though you turn it off in the settings, you may still have to turn it off here. Just a heads up. What's going on here is our, we have two tracks that are having races on today's date, January 2nd. One's in Brooklyn, and it tells you it's a flat left-handed course, good to soft footing, uh, up to 13 furlongs. The low is two furlongs, evidently, and the favorites are winning 39% of the time. In Columbus, it's also a flat left-handed course, good to soft. Favorites, I guess that's favorites, are winning 52% of the time. So what is a, le a flat course? Well, if you've ever watched the Kentucky Preakness Belmont, where they just run in the oval and it's flat, they just run, that's a flat track. If they have uh, the banisters that they have to jump over, that's a jumping track. And if we look at our little track layout here, basically if you're running this direction and you're making left turns, kind of like NASCAR, all the way around, that's a left-handed course. If you're running the opposite way, that would be a right-handed course. You can't have both. You're not going to ever uh, do both at the same time. Uh, let's see. So then they also show that the, each one has six races during the day. So when you see the Kentucky Derby, for example, the Kentucky Derby is one race or one card on on the day. But they may have 10 other races that day. So and then you have different types of races. So a mile, just for reference, is eight furlongs. So you have a five fur, so four furlongs would be a half mile. One, one mile, four furlongs would be one and a half miles. So this one, two is one and a quarter miles. Uh, I don't know what the classes mean. Have no idea. A handicap match or a handicap race. So let's say, uh, let's say you have, uh, you know, I, I hate to use any other analogies, but let's say you have a horse that's real good. And you have another horse that's not not so good, maybe average. Well, if they race, then nine times out of ten, the better horse is going to win, right? If all things, el everything else is equal. Well, what they can do is they add lead weights into the saddle pockets or the jockey vest and make the better horse carry more weight. So let's say they say, well, he's 200 pounds better. Well, if they add 200 pounds then they're saying now they're on an even field, right? And so that's what a handicap race does. They, they put more weight on the better horses to try to make them even as far as a running and betting and chance to win perspective. Uh, tells you the type of track, a dirt track, an open uh, turf, turf, uh, dirt. And like you can see here, we have on our farm right now, we only have a grass track. But right here in the picture, you can see there's a grass track on the inside and a dirt track on the outside. So that's how they can run a dirt and then a turf. They'll run in the separate sections. Uh, open field is open registration. Uh, this one is only to horses four years old or older. Uh, some are only open to two-year-olds like this one or only three-year-olds. So you have a two-year-old season, a three-year-old season, and then basically an open, which is four and older. So, you know, that's kind of the lifespan of a racehorse. Uh, your first year as a yearling and one-year-old, you will not race. Uh, a maiden is your first race. I'm pretty sure I'm right there. Is your first race, competitive race as a horse. Uh, so most of these are maidens. You have the one handicap and then a selling race. Be very careful. If you have a horse that you want to get rid of, you might put him in a selling race and hope he does well and get somebody's attention because at the end of that race, every horse that runs goes up for auction immediately. And so if it's a horse that you would like to keep and you enter him by mistake, which I learned this the hard way, he got bought out from under me after winning two races in a row. Um, and I was like, wait a minute. And I said, oh, it was a selling race, darn. So selling races, that's only if you want to get rid of a horse. They also have auctions. We'll talk about that in a future episode. Right now, this is just set up and going through the game. All right, on our screen here, and then there's news. So that's what this screen tells us. Now up here, you see the flashing mail icon. So let's click on that. That tells us that we've got mail. 
And lo and behold, Secretary has entered the game. So Secretary is there. And we can uh, click on, well, I guess we can't. So we're going to delete that. We've read it. We're going to go back now. There's our back button up here in the corner. Now the globe, you see the mail icon's gone, but the globe is flashing. Well, let's click on that. And that's to select where our stable is going to be. Now, at the very beginning, you choose a UK-based racing, United States, Australia, and Ireland. Okay, so that's going to give you the map. So if you chose UK, you're going to have the map of the UK. I chose America. That's where I'm, that's where I live. So that's where we're at. Now this is not very accurate <laughs> because we know this is Louisiana here and there are no mountains like that in Texas and Louisiana. I don't know what they're looking at here, but there are no mountains like that down here because I live in Texas and I'm from Louisiana. So this says Louisiana here. Well, Baton Rouge is right there. New Orleans is right here, and I'm from right there. Uh, now, this is Houston, which is actually right about there. And then Texas, which would be pretty much this entire area here. Um, so it's very, very generic. The, and this pink one is our track, where it is right now. Okay. Now we can move it anywhere we want. We can move up here into you know the polar ice cap if we want to, or Nova Scotia or wherever. But what you want to think about when you bring a horse from your farm to go race at a track, there's a fee involved, there a transportation cost from getting from point A to point B. And that's just money that you're throwing away basically for driving, time, gas, everything else. So you might want to be somewhere in the vicinity of where you might be racing. So do we want to focus on the Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas races? Oklahoma's here. See, that says Vancouver. Well, Vancouver's in Canada, and it's in western Canada. That would be out here. So they've moved these just to make it make a little more sense from a perspective, I guess. So you have Iowa. Uh, let's see if I can find, okay, there's Louisville. Louisville is the site of the Kentucky Derby. Kentucky's there. Florence, Florida, Arcadia. You do have the California. Well, see, Brooklyn is in California. Wow. Arkansas is way out there. See, Brooklyn, I was thinking was Brooklyn, New York. Arkansas is just north of Louisiana here. So they've lumped these a different way. So... I think what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the Texas and Louisiana and Oklahoma. So I am going to go ahead and base, and I cannot choose, I cannot choose a place they're already there. So we're going to go right next to Houston, and there we've moved our base, and we have to come down now and hit this Fix Stable button. That sets it up permanently there. If you don't hit this, you're going to still have the globe blinking when you go back to the other screen. So we're going to fix our location. We're going to go back and notice the globe no longer spinning or flashing. All right. So that's the game setup. That's the basics, guys. That is it. So we're going to end this episode. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, next episode, we're going to focus on uh, doing breeding and auctions. I think I'm going to have to do those together, and there's a reason. We'll talk about it next episode. Appreciate you guys checking this out. I hope it helps you out if you're new to horse racing or new to this game and want to enjoy it. Uh, but let me know. Let me know in the comments. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.